Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, Dylan's over there in the corner chewing and today we're gonna be talking about the second half of my December wrap-up and after this video I'm gonna post like the end of the year stuff But I wanted to make sure to cover these books that I've read that are great, but might not make my top 10 I want to make sure you see them. Um, so let's jump in. Let's let's get this one over first and This is the geek feminist revolution uh, by Cameron Hurley now I appreciate a lot of things about this book, like how uh, she makes some very valid points about the problems that the sci-fi genre has, um, how it's very sexist and often very racist, and how that needs to stop happening. And I really appreciated several of these essays, which I think was why this thing was very hit or miss for me. I felt like it, the essays, you know, they were written for other platforms and put together they're very repetitive and they cover the same topics over and over again and I felt like she had so much to say what if she started talking about something else instead of going over that point like a, a third or fourth time and so overall I found some of these essays very interesting um, but most of them I feel like were a miss for me but I did really love how she talks about having a chronic illness. She has diabetes and was diagnosed as an adult with like, I think it's type one diabetes, which is very unusual and, or something. Anyway, so I really appreciate how she talks about what it's like to have a chronic illness, particularly when you freelance and you don't have insurance and what that looks like, i.e. what the bill looks like when you don't have coverage and stuff. Even with insurance, it's super expensive. So anyway, I really appreciated that and I really appreciated her angle as a, you know, woman who writes science fiction and fantasy and who is a nerd and how she talks about the realities of being a writer and trying to make money writing and the difficulty she's had writing her books and buying the rights back and all this stuff. I really appreciated those essays, but I just really struggled through a lot of them. So that's this one. And I was very excited about that book, so I found it a little bit disappointing. A book that wasn't disappointing is Carmen Maria Machado's book, uh, In the Dream House, which is about her relationship with another woman. So this has trigger warnings for domestic and emotional abuse, uh, but Carmen was in a relationship with another woman and who was very abusive. And so this is her memoir. Now this memoir is told in like little snippets, and so it's very brief snapshots of the relationship. So you can see how Dreamhouse as meet the parents. Dreamhouse as here comes the bride. And she just looks at that, that relationship. Uh, she reads the audiobook and it does have a lot of trigger warnings. It's very difficult to read, but it's very important. And her writing is so beautiful. It's just so well done on a sentence level. It's just incredible. And I found myself immersed in this story of her life and her relationship, being a uh, bisexual Latina writer who is trying to make her way in the world and is very uh, self-conscious about her writing and what she's doing. And then she meets this woman who seems to come out of nowhere and how she compromises her own like relationship standards because she's so taken in by this woman. It's such a good book. It's everything I hoped it would be. Yes, it's amazing. Well, just so good. I'll talk about that later. It's like, I'll talk about that book more later. That's spoiler. A book that I really needed uh, that's just fun is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This book is not the kind of book that's going to win big literary awards. That is amazing on a literary kind of scale. But what this book is, is a fun book. I have very low expectations for things that I just want to enjoy. It's like watching certain movies, like anything with The Rock, I will watch. I love action movies that are very strange and would not win an Oscar, but I love watching them because they bring me joy. Like, that's the kind of book that this is, and I mean no disrespect from that at all. I love Holly Black's books. I think they're so restorative for me. I read them and I feel like I've entered into this fairy world, because this is a fairy world, and it's so fun to see what happens with the story and the way that she creates the world and the world building and all of these different things how she tackle, tackles different topics and looks at all different types of women and i really appreciate that and i find these books really fun so go forth if you want a fun book if you've had a red just read in the dream house and your soul is on fire then you might want to read this one it'll be very calming 
soul is on fire. Wow, didn't know where that was hiding. All right, another book that I read, which is another very difficult book, was um, Eggshell Skull by Bree Lee. If you have read Know My Name by Chanel Miller, that's this story, but from a different perspective. So Bree Lee is a lawyer. They're called something different in Australia. I'm so sorry to my Aussie friends, but she is a lawyer. And so she is doing like this working for a judge as his kind of like assistant. Um, and it's kind of like, I feel like this is sort of like her residency for a medical degree, only it's for lawyers. But anyway, so she's working for this judge and a lot of sexual assault cases come in and it's her observing what happens with that and how little justice these women get, even when the guy gets, uh, a guilty verdict, he still doesn't really serve much time. And she looks at the failure of the system from that perspective, from a lawyer's perspective, as opposed to Chanel Miller, who's looking at it from a survivor's perspective. Uh, and so when she then realizes, remembers something from her past uh, of a guy sexually assaulting her when she was a child, uh, she decides to go forward and um, try to get him charged and to go to court and for something to be on his record. She knows that he won't serve any time. He, the most that will happen is that he has to pay a lot of money for lawyers and it will be on his permanent like record. And that's all that she wants. But just the process of doing that as someone who survived the sexual assault was just so difficult for her because dates got changed and no one really seemed to care about her. And it made her look at those cases that she had been a part of uh, very differently. And this was a very intense, difficult book. Um, it's only available in Australia. I ordered this from Book Depository. And um, and she reads the audiobook. And it's just very moving. And I kept everything together. Like, you read a lot of really difficult things. So just know that this book has all the trigger warnings. But I, I, I kept it together until the end when she was reading her acknowledgments. I lost it. Like... Oh my word. I, I found Chanel Miller's book very difficult to talk about as well. But there's something there's something about when you read the acknowledgments about them, both of them. Like it was Chanel Miller's victim statement, then I lost it because she reads the audiobook of hers as well. Uh, and them just thanking though the people in their life that helped them move forward from that kind of trauma. It's very it's very good. But just know this is very much like Chanel Miller's story and that it's very difficult to read. And um, not many women get justice in the story because our systems, both in America and in Australia in this case, are very broken. So from there, I want to talk about a book that I've read all year. Um, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later in an Appalachian video. But this is Appalachian Reckoning, A Region Responds to Hillbilly Elegy, edited by Anthony Harkins and Meredith McCarroll. This is out from West Virginia University Press. Guys, I'm just gonna lay it on the line here. I'm very exhausted by people who love Hillbilly Elegy. Not be because people don't seem to realize that that is not a memoir. He's making over generations about 20, a region that has 25 million people from just his personal experience from outside of Appalachia. He's, you know, the grandchild of people who are Appalachian, right? He, does, he didn't really live there. Anyway, I have so many problems with it. And so I really loved what you're getting wrong about Appalachia, which I talked about last year. I'll link it up here somewhere. But this book is a perspective from many different people from Appalachia, from all different racial and ethnic backgrounds, from different sexualities and orientations, and all the different things are in this book. And it starts out with an academic bent, but then it goes to personal essays. There's poetry, there's like pho photography kind of essays. And I really appreciate all these different perspectives. Some of them really love hillbilly elegy and some of them most of them don't but i really appreciated that balance of perspectives uh, some of these essays just don't work for me like execution wise uh but mo for the most part i really appreciated how this book is giving all these different appalachians a voice instead of just looking at one dude as a voice of a community that he doesn't even belong to i found this book way more useful because it's so many different people. It's not just one person's perspective. It's so many different people's perspectives. So many people who've actually studied Appalachia in an academic way, but also people who just live as Appalachian people. I, I loved it. I loved it. I would highly recommend it. Um, if you want a place to start, 
go with what you're getting wrong about Appalachia because it's much shorter, but this is definitely a more intense look and I will be talking about this later in another video about books from Appalachia because I finally finished three. It's a miracle. It took me an entire year. It's because I can't read print, guys. We'll get there. The last book I'm going to talk about is definitely one of my top books of the month and that is The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee by David Chewer. This is Native America from 19... 1890 to the present. Now, you might remember a while ago, I read uh, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee, which is by D. Brown. I will correct myself if, if that's incorrect. Anyway, so it's about uh, the Native American tribes from various places up unto Wounded Knee, which is a giant massacre that basically marks the end of a certain era. When David was writing his introduction. He's very respectful, but basically he said reading that book made it sound like Native people's lives are only tragedy. They're only about broken treaties and the horrific things that have happened to them, and then their existence basically ended. But he said that's not true. Native and Indigenous peoples are still here in America. They're still doing great things. They're still living their lives, and there needs to be an awareness of that. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day and she is a Native woman and she was talking about how her sister went to school and said, yeah, I'm Native American. And then her schoolmates said, but they don't exist anymore. They all died. And that's basically why I think Dave, part of the reason why Dave is writing this book, because he really wants to chronicle what Native peoples have been doing for, you know, 19, 18, 19, to the present and I think it's so important so I will talk about this book later but I really think this book is amazing and I read it it's like 500 some pages I think I don't know I read it in like two days because he does such a great job and he does a perfect balance of combining memoir with this non-fiction um, history kind of analysis that he does um, and talks about how you know Native Americans aren't really one group they're obviously a bunch of different nations but America likes to lump them all in together and uh, what you know his experience you know being a native person um, and writing about it and um, oh, it's just so good so definitely go check it out I'm gonna go and try to figure out how to better articulate how much I love this book in a later video uh, but Yes, it, it is everything that everyone says it is, and there's obviously an amazing reason why it was a finalist for this year's National Book Award. All right, so those are the books that I read in December. I will return for a little discussion video wrap up and future plans for my channel video, as well as a uh, favorite books of uh, 2019 video and a most anticipated books for 2020 video coming up here shortly but thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel by watching um, I greatly appreciate it and I hope that you all had a great holiday season and I will talk to you soon bye guys